I'm Jessica Ashu. I'm the Deputy Director of the Middle East Strategy Task Force here at the Atlantic Council. I'm Richard LeBaron. I'm a former U.S. diplomat and a non-resident senior fellow at the Atlantic Council. Uh, today I'm here with uh, Jessica to discuss an article we collaborated on this, which uh, focused on education in the Middle East. Uh, and I wonder, Jessica, if you could explain what prompted us to write this piece? Well, at the Middle East Strategy Task Force, we're looking at how to uh, put the region on a more positive, uh, prosperous trajectory, not only in terms of security, but looking uh, more widely at what it takes to make the Middle East more peaceful. And so economic reform is a part of that. Um, and education is an enormous part of, of that as well. And so we were recently on a trip to the region. Um, we visited a number of countries from Tunisia to Egypt to Jordan to Saudi Arabia to the United Arab Emirates, uh, looking and doing a fact-finding mission on what it would take to put the region on a more positive trajectory. And one thing that we found was that education is a big, big part of that story, whether you're talking about um, making people more resistant to violent extremism or making them more self-sufficient in order to start a business and uh, reduce economic pressures on, on governments. Education is the key to it. And we also found uh, countries doing really innovative things in order to try and put their reform plans into action. And again, education was at the center of it. For example, um, take a country like Saudi Arabia, where two-thirds of the population is under the age of 30. If you can give uh, those young people meaningful education and meaningful skills, then suddenly, within the space of a generation, you have transformed that society. Well, you're certainly right about that. And I, as a practicing diplomat, saw this in action, both uh, with university students coming to the United States. When I was ambassador to Kuwait, I, one of my big activities was going out and talking to students and parents about opportunities for study in the United States. Not because it's just a nice thing to do, but because it has a strategic interest for the United States to build these long-term relationships. And I think we need to integrate that education uh, ability uh, to provide education better into our, into our foreign policy and not only at uh, university education, but also short-term exchanges, such as high school programs that are very successful for a year of study by young uh, people from the Arab world and the United States, and short-term exchanges that have been the hallmark of our uh, exchange programs, the International Visitor Leadership Program, which brings people, professionals, for three weeks to interact with uh, their counterparts in the United States, an enormously successful program that draws on communities all over the United States. We need to do more of this and we need to do it more strategically. That's right, and the strategic element of that is really important because in a region where a lot of people see American tools as limited only to security things, or in a place where people see the American brand in a lot of ways as many tarnished, the American brand in education is still absolutely golden. People want American-style education for their children, whether that means sending them abroad to the United States for their education, or more and more importing the American education model to their own societies. Yeah, I think we need to look at all of these elements. We need to approach them in a long-term way, in a strategic way, in a smart way, and they will have an impact. Thank you. Thank you.